volume for once in a whole stream. So let's get started. As soon as uh, my stream pops up, make sure I'm doing what I'm actually doing here. But today, um, we are playing some some classic Death and Taxes. We tried to meme it up with some Squadron Hawks on Friday, and that just did not work out. <laughs> Played a bunch of matchups where we really don't want Squadron Hawk in our deck. Not to say that that's like not a reasonable strategy still, just hit a, a bout of bad luck during that stream. But today we're playing a far more traditional build. Uh, this might be my only stream this week. I'm not, I don't think I'm streaming Wednesday. Because my parents are coming down for Thanksgiving that day. But they might be getting in late, so I might be able to sneak in a stream. But uh, tentatively, this is my only stream this week. So I wanted to play a traditional build. A build that I felt was like pretty safe to try to help out some of the people that are uh, playing in, uh, the GP this weekend. So, um, a couple of iterations on the list that I streamed. When uh, Ren Six first got banned, I believe it was the yeah it was, I streamed on Monday, skipped Wednesday, and then I played the Squawks on Friday. So yeah, uh, we only a couple cards shifted around. I think the big ones to touch on are Walking Ballista. I think Walking Ballista is like a pretty powerful, could be a pretty powerful flux card in this meta. Not only is it just like really really good in the mirror, but uh, it kind of bridges the gap between kind of playing as fair creature decks and playing as like uh, the control decks. It was always just a kind of nice card to randomly draw late game to be a big mana sink you could use it to shoot down baleful strixes get them out of the way or uh be able to kind of try to pressure um pressure like miracles board states without like playing too hard in the board wipes anything not stock about this list no we're playing it like a what i would consider a very very stock list right now which is also what i would consider going into the gp with i think it's really hard to meta game for metas that are uh very uh, ambiguous and kind of up in the air on what they're going to settle on. So I think I would default to playing a stock list, try to, to uh, hold your ground and uh, leverage your play skill and in various matchups to try to uh, come out on top. One thing that I would mention about this list that is not not stock, but like a little bit. Uh, Eric Smith, thanks for the uh, six month resub. Return the Machine Gun Menace, indeed. Walking Blista. From my time playing uh, Bomberman, Logan Blista, a very good magic card. Less so when you don't have much fast mana, but still strong. But anyway, uh, the only thing I would say was non stock about this list is we're playing five graveyard hate cards between two rest of peace, two surgicals, which have become like very, very stock at this point. We're playing the Containment Priest. I think graveyard decks are in for an uptick. And I'm not just saying that because our last league we played against Dredge, Hogak, Hogak, Lands, and uh, Bomberman. <laughs> I do legitimately think that uh, I think graveyard strategies in terms of like the combo decks are kind of poised to uh, be pretty powerful, specifically like Dredge and Hogak and stuff, those sorts of graveyard decks. Uh, so I think the fifth graveyard hate card is definitely in order, and I think Containment Priest is one of your better cards against Dredge. Obviously, sometimes it just straight up isn't fast enough, but it's also one of the cards that once if you can get it on the board, they just actually can't win the game. Usually Dredge has like actual zero cards to get a Container Priest off the board, which is kind of why uh, Bomberman played a bunch of Container Priests over stuff like Leyline of the Void, because you could power it on turn one, and a lot of the graveyard decks just can't get it uh, off uh, off the battlefield. And against the Hogak decks, it does miss a fair number of the cards against Hogak. It misses like Grave Crawlers, it misses Bridge, it misses Hogak itself, which uh, all of which are pretty big. But it does stop Blood Ghasts, and it stops uh, Venge Vines in the the newer iterations. I guess I should stop saying new iterations. It was mostly the old iterations that didn't play Venge Vine, and like all, I think the Venge Vines are now pretty stock, though. But it does it definitely has text against the uh, Hogak lists. It is probably worse than like some of your other Graveyard Hate against that matchup specifically. But it also has splash damage versus like Sneak and Show and stuff, Green Sun Zeniths and the like. So I do think graveyard hate is important. I think pack your graveyard hate. Don't don't uh, skimp on it just because you have like deafening silences or something. Because I think you need to be preventing your opponent from doing their broken stuff in their graveyard, and that involves actually exiling stuff, not just letting them cast one spell a turn. Especially in the case of like Hogak and Dredge. But anyway, Malibu still in the listener. I don't think so. I 
played against it twice on Friday. I didn't see any amalgams. I like that they can't have room for amalgam, right? And it doesn't synergize with Hogak or anything. Specifically, it doesn't synergize Hogak because it comes back on end step and comes back in tapped, not because, like, it obviously synergizes very well with a deck that brings a bunch of stuff back from the graveyard, but I don't think Amalgam is stocking those lists. Um, yeah. There are a couple of decisions. I, I, the only things that I would really change about this list, depending on, like, preference or depending on what you expect to see in the room or what, you, what, uh, what you're trying to be, I think... Are like second second sanctum probably could see sideboard play over something. Um, you could play a flyer, either atomic or a Sarah Avenger in the main deck. I think those are like the big ones. Um, potentially like play less path to exile or something. But I think Grixis Delver and definitely Blue Red Delver are gonna be out in force. Although Path isn't the best against Blue Red Delver, but I think Blue Red Delver is one of your best matchups. So enough talking. Let's play some Magic of the Gathering. That's what we all come here for. For more Splex. Yeah, more Splex is an option. I saw the uh, the winning list. The win, uh, what was it? The MKM list this weekend or something? Or more Splex for the main? I'm not sold on it. it. Definitely could be a fine flex slot. It's just like random decent beater value versus the fair decks. And sometimes you like want graveyard hate. Like if you get it down after. Uh, after your miracles about terminus is you or something, it makes their uh, Mystic Sanctuaries worse. Or against like Grixis and Sampcaster Mages, or like a Blocks Delvers. I can see it. It's not unreasonable. It might be reasonable in the flyer slot over something. If you want that fifth flyer that people refer to a lot, and like the Saravenger Tomic after you play four Wisps. I think the easiest cut is probably like one of the Crusaders, but. Bara's Violist. I mean, Bara's Violist had a lot of things. Uh, this list is a little... Or this list. This hand is a little bit... Meh. It's really good with Aether Vial. It's level 4. I think it's good enough to keep, but... I'm not thrilled about it. I feel like I say that about a lot of Desert Hexes hands. I feel like a lot of your hands are just, like, feel very medium, just because... The base line power level of Death and Taxes just feels like so much weaker than a lot of other legacy decks. But they, a lot of the time, they do just end up panning out because your cards are good and match up very well against a lot of what your opponents are doing. They just feel less powerful, you know? Like, Swords of Plowshares, Swords of Force Mystic, very good magic cards. Could be playing in Storm here and just fucking die. Well, I guess we'll see what they take. If they take the Revoker, they're probably Storm. If they take the Stoneforge, they're probably like Rixus Delver. I suppose Lunel, but also take the Plow. Okay, so they're probably Delver. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, but also Bar's list was like four. Those like quad recruiter of the guard, so he's maxing on, on like his ability to find a lot of bullets. I kind of just don't even want to play anything into a daze here. Is that wrong? I guess I could just toss a revoker into a daze, but we have so many lands in hand. I could just pour. Just pouring seems fine. Shadow? Oh, that could be. Shadow is just, like, never really on my radar. Kind of into just porting. I mean, if they had more, if they had more discard, then they would probably have taken my, the stuff that got cast this turn, and then use the discard to take the plow when they're trying to deploy a threat. So I feel like this is because, oh, I don't care about the Stoneforge Mystic because I can like daze it or something, or just like kill it. Yeah, hand definitely. We don't. We're very light on stuff to uh, spells to cast. So I think I want to play our daze if I can. If the rules are reversed, if we had like four spells and like one more land in hand, then it's a lot easier to just plow through days. I feel like Delver doesn't care about plow as much as Shadow. I don't know. Now I really don't know. I mean, obviously, Blue Fetch can mean anything because if you're playing like Shadow with no basic swamp or you're playing a Delver deck, Misty finds all your duels anyway. 
Well, we already have the sword, so I think just grabbing batter skull is fine, but if they just have, like, have a fatal push, they could be, like, bug. They could just be, like, bug stuff. They don't need to be a delver deck, necessarily. Although, I, I think bug stuff wouldn't take the plow, right? Because they don't really care about it. I think we're just going to play Stoneforge, get batter skull. They, like, fatal push it, so it's, like, tempo positive for them, but that's... I think a life that I have accepted. <laughs> yeah, they're probably just gonna like Fatal Push or Lightning Bolt or something here. Shardless Bug's still playable, Sans Death Ray. I've definitely not seen Shardless Bug in a long time. You have Fatal Push and Bayou, so definitely a bug deck. Remains to be seen if my opponent is casting Delver of Secrets or not, but taking the Plow made it really feel like they have Delvers. But maybe they're just predicting this Goyf. This Broker sucks. We're getting towards just Batter School, man, though. What are we recruiting for? I guess just Crusader. Crusader's just insane. I think it, like, snapped off season or whatever. Getting Crusader seems really good against the deck who has uh, nothing but uh, green and black cards, basically. Ding. <laughs> but value. <laughs> True, value is nice. Who doesn't love some value? Got a lot of lands. Is this Oko? Yeah. Alright, this Mirror Crusader looks pretty good, especially with all this equipment in hand. Blister for the Mirror, kind of. It kind of bridges the gap between, like, the Mirror, like, those types of decks, and also, like, the Baleful Strix decks. And just kind of a mana sink and grindy matchups. I think I just gotta slam this Crusader and hope they don't have a counter. Um, Thalia does not protect us from anything because they have a mana up, so all it does is play us into a daze. So I think we want to go Crusader than Thalia. Possibly we don't even want to play Thalia because of these equipment. I think we might want to Revoker. Just like Crusader, Revoker, Oko. Four loco. Not incorrect. Brainstorm for the uh, Force of Will, I imagine. It's not an unreasonable line to play the Thalia, but I don't really think that's. I guess it is kind of an unreasonable line to play the Thalia to beat Brainstorm into Force of Will or something. Especially because I really want to deploy this Revoker this turn, because the Oko's in play. Alright, that seems pretty good for us. Oko, Thief of Crowns. And I'll attack it for one. Since Revoker is very fragile, definitely want to actively try to get it off the board. And plus, if it's at, like, four loyalty or something, we could just hit them in the face with Crusader, and then double ping with the sword. We don't need to, like, waste a bunch of damage like that. But if this thing's going to, like, six or seven here, then I need to go with the sword smush route. Seems like a weird order there, but okay. food. Alright, tapping. Oh, dear, this is scary. That's a lot of damage. We can't kill. I think we can sort up the Crusader and... Might 
not sort of the yeah, I was thinking might not sort of they leave up the decay as well. But yeah, they tapped out, so. Huh. I mean we're not dead. We can't dead them. We can put them to three. Uh Green PM, thanks for the six month resub, appreciate it. Over two turns in Goro. It's a possibility. What we they take twelve go to three, we just try to kill them with Crusader next turn, we can jump block with the Recruiter. And if we can't jump block with the Recruiter, we're only taking 13 on the backswing here. If they abrupt decay their own Oko or something to put Planeswalk in the Reaper, that's still only 15. That's if they abrupt decay the Oko and clear my Recruiter of the Guard here. They can actually gain... Oh no, if they make a food, then they're not dealing with the Swords, they can't technically gain out of range. Deading them isn't a bad proposition, certainly. Double Tarmogoyf is pretty scary. I don't know if we can... Because we can't just, like, clear the Oko. Goyf is 3-4. Goyf's a 5-6. Okay, creature, into sorcery, land, and artifact. Wait, where's the sorcery? Oh, Thoughtseize. Sword up and kill a guy. No, we can't, right? It only deals four. They're five sixes. I could kill a food token, but. I think I do just want to dead them. I kind of agree. So we're not playing our land here because I think we want to just draw two cards and like potentially find a wasteland to try to gum up their stuff a little bit. I do think I just want to dead them. It's a possibility that they could find like Decay the Sword. And then, like, make a food, try to gain life out of it. But even then, they only gain three, so they'd be at uh, six. They can actually steal my recruiter in the guard, couldn't they? To potentially block. Ugh. Didn't think about this. Then we get, like, a three, three or something. Just have the first strike hit Oko and the second strike hit them, obviously. Now we could uh, tutor. We could recruit for a flicker waste, but that plan doesn't work for them anymore. Stealing my recruiter to block. So yeah, we're just deading them. Ooh, now we get to cast a mom, too. If they steal the mom, it doesn't do anything. It's the same. Issue it and it's summoning six, so they won't be able to do anything. So, yeah, we can play them on here. Oh, wow, they do have days. Could have shot Oko once. Yeah, I don't think, after, especially after we drew this, I don't think it's fine. Surprised they didn't try to daze that sword there. They didn't know I had the land. Dazing the sword seems like very high upside potentially. I was about to say, if they steal my sword, we're still fine. Because we have blockers. Hey, we did it. Look at that. No cowards. I'm proud. I think it was like legitimately the best line. They had a very scary board state. I think the plan of just smush them is probably our best bet. If we hadn't drawn the Recruiter, though, we do... I think we needed to uh, shoot the Oko once, right? They can't take art. Oh, it can't not take artifacts? Once a day, I have to check the condition on the Oko. Yeah, I don't fucking know. It, if they can only trade artifacts for... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because it's like a CMC barrier on the creature or whatever. see this card. Xander control target artifact or creature you control with target creature and opponents. Oh, power three or less, of course. Much, m super easy to remember. Oh, okay, because it's power three or less because it, it can steal anything at elks, so it doesn't care about CMC. So they just want to elk stuff and then steal it. Okay, yeah, that all, that all tracks. Anyway, um, so they have days. So I imagine they're a more aggressive deck. 
very Delvery. So let's bring in these things. I don't even know if Rip is good against bug decks anymore. Like it's like exactly Tarmogoyf. Not at all confusing with Death Shadow, yeah. No, just everything real simple about Oko. I just assume the worst all the time with Oko. It's just like, oh, it could probably just do anything. So it probably just, like, fucking kills you. Steals your artifacts, yeah, whatever. Um, don't love Jailer in these aggressive matchups. Although it's better against Bug if they're not playing uh, True Names. But we don't know if they're not... Probably worse against Bug than against most Elver decks, especially because they get a lot of two drop removal. Yeah, they sometimes have like some Gurmogs, but yeah, I'm not sold on Rip in the, any of the post Death Rite eras. Revoker is probably bad. Hits Oko, but like, eh, this is probably fine. Ballista is really medium, actually. Maybe Ballista actually sucks here. Hits only Delver. There aren't a lot of actual ping targets in this matchup. Goifs get big. Ballista feeds Goifs. Just lost playing 5 over to Liliana's. You can't blast. You can basically blast them. Oh no. Green Elemental Blast doesn't actually work on permanence. Uh, I think we're playing just Crusader. Just stomp them. This looks okay. I could see bringing in actually like the Jailer for a Ballista. Jailer, the, the bug decks tend to be, like, more grindy. Jailer seems like a pretty decent card. Jailer's... Eh. This hand is gas. I'm, in, I'm into this hand. Thoughtseize. Ponder. Delver. Okay, sure. Uh, I think we just toss Vile into a daze here. Taking three. His hand's ready to lose to an Oko. Oh, yeah. Force of negation, sure. If three card. Wait, did they mull? They didn't. They just have three cards in hand. One, two, three. I guess that's how math works. Wild. Reveal Thoughtseize. Alright, well, you can't Thoughtseize both swords, but uh, our plan is our opponent to never have an Oko. Because they're definitely going to take the stone for. What? Okay. I guess they have Force of Will blue card as the last cards, but no, then the Stone Forge just clears the Delver. What? I think I'm just going to plow this Apparition. Yeah, seems like kind of a wild choice. I guess they have, like, another creature in hand. But, like, a Tarmogoyf's not going to end this game. All right, deal. I want to bait them into wastelanding me, so we can port them because they're missing land drops. So I think we want to ancient tomb. Oh, we can actually even cast our Kite if we wanted. <clears throat> we might not want to though because of like dazes and stuff. And the Stone Forge is very much not long for this world, though. I imagine three cards in hand, no spells cast. It's probably green spells or removal spells. Um, so I kind of do want to get Gite here. Gite is not the best against. We have a lot of mana. Maybe we do just get Batterful anyway. Maybe we just don't get Wastelanded and we just uh we play in Stoneforge Mystic. Because we can set up to cast a Batterful if my Stoneforge dies. You get Skull and cast it next to Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah, maybe we don't need to get Wasteland. Substatic. Crap. The B skull. Lose so hard to do. Yeah, we don't need to cast the Bowers one next turn either. Fatal push, yeah, shocker. Delver deal. I think we're just playing. Days here though. This battle is so good if it resolves. 
They have two cards in hand. We have not played into... Although they did Force of Negation my Violence with Dazing it, so they didn't have a Daze then. They, might, they obviously might have a Daze now. But especially with this Wasteland to play, we're probably not getting in this Bashful that soon anyway. And then the following turn, we can, uh, like, Flicker Wisp port them or something, or Mom Flicker Wisp, so it's not the end of the world. Yeah, I don't know what my opponent was doing when they took my second Swords of Plowshares and then just didn't immediately cast a second threat. Sure. Hey. Wisp Wisp Mom also fine, yeah. Delver didn't flip, deal. They wastelanded me on my on my turn for no reason, so they definitely they don't have Oko mana right now. You could have Assassin's Trophy or something. Oh, well, that's cool. That's, that's really bad for you, opponent. That's not going to go well. That Abrupt Decay is uh, not going to go smoothly. Oof. Um, I think we want to play Port in case we draw Wasteland. not the best abrupt decay in the world that's not the best force of negation i've ever seen either <laughs> wisp mom does seem good this turn too accurate um we're just making a super wisp right their hand is literally force of negation nothing we're just untapping making super wisp and just crushing their soul i also make super mom Oh, and then we get to double port them. Fucking deal. <laughs> Alright. Opponent immediately has enough. Bug Delver matchup seems pretty good. Has always been... Has historically been very good for death and taxes. Especially if you're playing a respectable number of Crusaders... They just have absolute fits trying to beat that card. But also, they just have traditionally also had fits beating Batter Skull. Where do y'all find these people? I don't know. Some days on... Some days on Moto. Get some wild opponents. Why this hand sucks. Why this hand also sucks. Uh, this hand is on the play... Is this the famous Bomberman streamer? You heard correctly. Famous Bomberman player XJ Cloud. My best results in Magic have been playing Bomberman. Actual fact. I guess unless you include all of the 10Ks along with Death and Taxes, but I don't know. Is Top 16 Eternal Weekend better than like winning a 10K? I also won a challenge with Bomberman. I got second in that challenge with DNT. Uh, my opponent kept seven. God, this hand sucks so much butts. But also, it has potential to be very good. And do we have a five that can beat a seven? Probably. Saying his bomb is better than doesn't. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. I hate this hand so much. Does we get 10k evolve in actual cash? Some of them did. I got like a grand for like two of them, I think. One of them was, like, actually, like, a 40 duels tournament. I got one of each blue duel, I believe. And then there was, like, a... F no, I only did three out of five, right? I won three out of five. Oh, no, I split the top eight of that modern one, though, and didn't get first. I forget. Yeah, I think... I don't know. London Mulligan makes me feel like we could have a better uh, five than, than this. Oh, man, this is a much better five. I'm glad I mulliganed. Remember, chat, mulliganing is a privilege. By Chite and God, it's gotta be this plow, right? I'm going to St. Louis to take money 
<laughs> faces customers. Well, it was pretty high EV, not gonna lie. I think it's this Plow. Plow is the least likely to be good, and if we're playing against Delver, A, we're probably toast, because we're on a five-card hand, but B, like, we have, we have ways to try to fight. I think with a five-card hand on the play, we just want to be, try to be proactive and stuff. Holy shit! Jarvis with the 254-person raid! Thanks so much. Appreciate it. That is uh, probably easily the biggest raid that I've gotten before. Appreciate it. Hello to everyone coming in, hanging out on the stream, I guess. Oh dear, Mox Diamond deck. Yeah, I couldn't ask for a better five. That is accurate. This is a very good five, for as far as five card hands go. Alright, playing as just lands, it looks like. Well... This hand kind of sucks, but... Luckily, card quantity isn't a big deal versus lands, especially in game one. You really just want to find Recruit the Guard and Sanctum Prelate. Ooh. Discard a crop rotation. Alright, these are all magic cards my opponent is playing. Imagine there's a life from the loam in my opponent's hand here. Let's just draw a recruiter of the guard or sanctum prelate and everything will be fine. There's no way wasteland is supposed to be in the stage is right. You multiply the cast two card disadvantage spells per Yeah, exactly. One opponent had to discard a card and then dis just one discard a card for the gamble. What could possibly go wrong? It's not like they're gonna cast Ancestral Recall next turn. Uh, I think we're just playing Thalia. Yeah. Sure. 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 So they have two cards in hand. There's no way that, like, trying to mana deny lands is just gonna work out for us. I mean, our best play... <laughs> There's no way that, like, we what, we cast Mom, we can Stoneforge for something, wasteland ourselves, uh, wasteland ourselves down to one mana. Play it with, yeah. If they just, like, don't hit mana-producing lands or we find, like, Revoker for this Mox Diamond or a Flicker Wisp. Um, it's like, I don't even know if this plays to win the game, though, is the issue. Because, like, we need our mana, but also this port is going to choke our mana regardless. What do you call this deck? Um, I'm trying to think of a witty thing involving being, like, Worst Bomber Man, but I'm bad at being put on the spot. Waifu Tribal. It's a, it's a classic. The old, an old standby. I think I'm just supposed to waste them as Rashad and Port and Prey. Really don't love it, though. And we're supposed to probably take our Vile up to three, because we have a lot more three hits than two hits. If you wanted to win this game. <laughs> we could have not molded to five. Yeah, that's... These are all lines. Maybe my opponent ran out of lands in their deck of 35 plus lands. You never know. Maybe we draw Flicker Waste, make it to Flicker Waste this Mox Diamond next turn, right after. Jay the Mind Sculptor thinks we'll follow. Aw, oh, dang. My plan did not work out. Maybe they don't have this life from the loan that they're casting. Wow, unlucky. Um, so I guess we're getting Sword of Fire and Ice. Fire School's pretty big against Maze. Sword protects a potential prelate from a eventual punishing fire. Be 
Bearskull deals with maze. I mean, Bearskull is also not very good against maze. It deals marginally more damage, but also, I don't expect to put in this Fire and Ice very soon. I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to take this up to three. My opponent picked up another uh, a plow, or not a plow, a uh, a Wasteland and a Schadenport. So if we draw, like, Wisp, we could potentially cut them off green mana for a turn, but obviously they have a bunch of lands in hand to discard to it. Revoker would be a reason to keep it on two, but that's like it, right? Let's double check here. All we have is extra Thalia's, extra Stone Forges, and two Revokers, versus Hits are Prelate, Recruiter, four Wisps. Yeah, Revoker is like the god draw, because we could potentially cut them off of green, but that's exactly two hits in the whole deck. If we draw three, we just have to wait one turn for it, though. Flickerwiss isn't, I don't think it's better because they can just get to keep the Mox Diamond around, right? Because they have two lands left over in hand. I think I'm ticking this up. Eh, well, doesn't matter yet. Just draw one of your zero copies of Tomic. That worked for us on Friday when we had the one copy of Tomic. Um, so if they... Yeah, we're talking with everything, because they're getting back loam. We just want to deal them as much damage as possible. They can't P-fire me this turn. We just need to push damage. I also shouldn't waste a bunch of time waffling on decisions in games where I'm, like, really far behind, because the lands matchup can take forever. Wow, they just took a natural draw, really. I guess they have two land drops to make, but I feel like that Mox Diamond is like a little bit concerning as their only mana source. Less so if my battle's on three, but they might not have any lands in hand. Poor Major, you got it. No, the punish. We could have a squire in play. So they're definitely going to loam next turn, right? But it costs three. Uh, they get back. Well, they can't. They don't have any lands currently. I think I'm just still sending with everything. We're not winning by holding this Mother of Runes back to protect our really bad board state and deal one damage instead of two. We're winning by drawing Recruiter of the Garter Saint to Prelate. That's currently our plan. <laughs> copy Wasteland, copy Maze of it. I guess that tracks. Just slowly, slowly choke them out. Double Maze means we only get to deal one damage. Last zone, very bad for us. They should probably just crack that now. And then we lose the game. Probably worth conceding here. We one turn of not getting ported. Oh no, the Mox M is there. I'm blind. <laughs> yeah, this seems like a pretty good opportunity to concede. Feels like we're pretty dead here. Oh yeah, they have two mazes. There's literally no point in attacking. They find a uh, Dark Depths. We can't even plow it either because we have one land locked up by Rathalia. So yeah, we... Yeah, they, they got us. I mean, they, they got us before they found the Dark Depths. The Dark Depths just like actually wraps it up all up in a neat bow. Wow, they didn't even play the Dark Depths. Dang. <laughs> Alright, yeah, I'm done here. Alright. 
lands match up. We got a lot of decent to good stuff. Definitely want all of these, and then sometimes Relic Order can be okay. It's like kind of a bad for X and Rogue, though. I think it's past its prime. Sometimes you can snag like drops of honey and stuff with that. Like the odd Mox Diamond or Exploration. It's probably better than like a Revoker, but Revokers might all get cut anyway. He still had permanence, why I bother him? I mean, we were about to have no permanence. Tech, like, is it Tamper's good? Tamper's doesn't do anything. It does not stop Dark Depths tokens. It specifically says non token creatures. Even if it did stop Dark Depths tokens, I don't think I'd board it in this matchup. I don't think Dark Depths is really the name of the game in this matchup specifically. Um, you can usually afford to go down a little bit on removal path better than Plow because sometimes you need to get through Merit Lages. Um, Thalia's generally not good against the deck that can hit all of the land drops forever. We just cut all the Revokers. Revoker tends to be pretty weak in this matchup. This looks okay. Could see something being here being worse than Phyrexian Revoker, but it all seems kind of fine. Uh, I go down to two equipment because GJ does not have a lot of text in this matchup, but I like keeping in four stone Forge Mystics because Sword of Fire and Ice is pretty important at protecting like random idiots from punishing fires. So you really want the ability to find the first equipment. So you kind of risk the uh, the late game Stone Forge is kind of being dead. Other than that, this looks okay. If Mom just lands now. I mean. Maybe Rogue is better than Mom. Mom's pretty bad, too. I was considering cutting the Moms instead. Rogue does not do a lot. Sometimes it can snipe their, like, awkward Mox Simon hands, like the one we just played against, but... Doesn't always happen. On the play, we'll keep it in the Moms. We easily trim some. What's up, Cyrus? Do you have an actual question, or do you have a trolling question? But I was saying it sucks. Ugh. These are the hands that, like, are just, like, very good hands on playing a game of Magic, and those hands never, ever, ever be lands. Trolling questions are actual questions, I guess, technically. Um, do you want to go to five again? Not really. Can we really bank on just, like, drawing our food cards to win this matchup? Notably, we have the ability to actually cast our spells, at least. Yeah, no, I I don't really like her that much against P-Fire decks, but I think a lot of our cards in our current iteration we, we can afford to cut against lands. I don't mind keeping some of them in. I can see cutting all of them and bringing in, like, two Revokers and, like, a, the fourth Plow or something. But, like, other options also not very good. I think I'm going to be... I'm going to keep this and be disappointed. Ship this hand, hope they don't have maze. It's kind of my plan. We have this port to like stop a maze activation sometimes. These are Whisper Path that I'm supposed to ship here. I think it's the. We have plenty of removal. We need stuff. Removal is not really something you actively want against lands, but it's something that you like kind of need at random awkward spots. Did you actually have a question, Cyrus? Because you never asked one. Alright, these are pretty good cards my opponent has played. I'm gonna cast a Punishing Fire. Hello. Oh, we got a Mom online. It's not bad. Uh, we get a sort of Fire and Ice going. Which also isn't bad. Uh, Arcanist Abe, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Wanted to not dredge. 
also be in tier two. <laughs> they have three Devil Exiles. Devil Exiles is a good magic card against Storm. Specifically. Alright. I wonder what this gamble's for. Drop of Honey? Anarchist. Did I say Archimist? I, I my brain said anarchist. I, did, I don't know if I said arcanist. Arcanist Abe. Now my brain's reading everything. <laughs> anarchist Abe, yeah. Second time. <laughs> I mean, I don't, that doesn't surprise me. The, the rate at which you were called Ar Arcanist A probably went up after Dreadhorde came out. Pithing Needle. Oh, that's kind of rude. Could potentially try to sneak in and uh, flicker with the needle and equip, but we'll let this resolve. Uh, hide, hide Ho Comics. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. His mother friends. Wow. What did they gamble for? They discarded the foothills. They didn't gamble for this needle just to put it on mom, right? Found back a path. Um, I think we're just gonna hit them for two and just cast the sword. I don't think there's a real reason to leave it up to put it on end step. The only artifact removal they have is like uh, grip and stuff. I'm gonna kind of protect the port to try to at least sneak in a punch through like a maze of it at some point. If we actually just wanted to like wisp my stone force that turn, go get the batter skull, and then potentially we have four four mana to like put in and equip the sword to the mom the following turn. This way is a little bit better against uh, something like a Maze of It because we have two mana to equip. This just feels like they have a Cross and Grip, right? Ooh, that's a draw step. That is quite the draw step, huh? They also didn't, yeah, they didn't port me, which means that we're just gonna get this uh, sword gripped, right? Oh, that makes that a Cataclysm worse? Yeah. It's possible we can try to finagle something at some point with it, but we probably want to pair it with, like, Rip or Surgical or something like that first. Any Force of Vigorous Lands you on that? I have no idea. Maybe K Grip's, like, not even a card that should be a I guess they could also hard cast a, uh, a uh, Force of Vigor here. That doesn't really change my idea though. I think we're just gonna equip, force their hand, and then port them or something. I think it's better than just like flicker wisping the Stoneforge Mystic or something like that. Like I said, I should probably stop spinning my wheels here. Removal spell of some sort. Yep. Goodbye. Guess we'll port their port so they just don't mess with my mana. Can't cut them off of colors realistically. I 
we can wisp our stone forge. Oh, they found a punishing fire. They have not found a grove yet, at least. Dear, Molten Vortex in 2019, huh? Probably not winning this unless we find Rest of Beast Surgical Extraction real soon. God, they can just kill my Stoneforge too in response to my attempt to flicker a spit. Yeah, I feel like we're pretty, pretty dead here. Do we even play more to the board, or do we just sit and wait for us to find, like, rip into Cataclysm? We could potentially try to shoot this Mox Diamond. What's in their hand? Do they have a stage in their hand? I don't think we know anything else in terms of things that they have uh, loaned back. They've only loaned back the foothills, the port, both of which are... Yeah. So they could have another land, obviously. Let's attack them for two and see what happens. Didn't know if Molten Vortex was like a card that Lance was playing anymore. We're just not supposed to play anything to the board. Yeah, I think we're just supposed to wait until we can find something to try to beat this. Well, this is what they gambled for. Can't realistically tap the red sources. I think we just need to find like Ripper Surgical. Or they just bury me. I'm surprised they don't need a mom. I mean, I guess that helps them with their vortex plan, but yeah, I don't know. This last time Lance was good enough to have a stock list. Jeesh. Some daggers getting thrown. Just go right to the noggin. Sure. Yeah, we don't really have a lot of plans here. Oh, they found Blastone too. This is not looking great. Whew. Uh, sure. Uh, Dat Do, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Yeah, we're probably pretty toast here. Going for the twice as fast Molten Vortex kill rather than the Punishing Fire kill. Weird that they're just letting their blast zone sit in the graveyard when we do have the threat of just top decking a rest in peace at any moment. It's not a very good draw. They're blasting now, so now we're ultra dead.
Ooh, feel it in. All right. Seems like a good time to pack it in. It's probably a good time to pack it in like two turns ago. We probably weren't winning. Now we're definitely not winning. The second Cataclysm, even better than the first one. Yeah. Definitely a begrudging keep on that six. Maybe it might have been right to just go to five, honestly. I was trying to think about playing Mon Pather. Yeah, that probably would have been a good idea. Although, oh yeah, when they were like, when sometimes they tap out from boarding me. Like, I think that line was available like two turns ago or something. Oh, when they had Roaring Red Source, you could like bait an activation on it too. That's fair. We're good here. <laughs> Nothing to see, folks. What is this journal stream this week? Um, it's Thanksgiving week for those of us in America. I don't know where people in chat are but my parents are coming down wednesday at some point uh thanksgiving's on thursday and they're staying until like saturday at my place so uh probably not definitely not streaming friday probably not streaming wednesday but they're apparently arriving later than expected on wednesday so i might be able to sneak in a stream but unlikely Thanksgiving. Are you one of those Canadians with their with their with their fake Thanksgivings? All right. What are we doing? It'll... <laughs> Hey, I wasn't the first one to call someone else's Thanksgiving fake. I always just see opening hands with Barrowskull and just like have a visceral reaction to them. His hand's almost there, but definitely weak. Oh, wow. I, a lot of feelings with this hand real fast. I think we're okay with this and putting back a batter skull. I'm not happy with it, certainly, but definitely not going to fight. Maybe they'll force pull my Aether Vial. What if we played Brainstorm? Why would we do that when we could play Aether Vial and just draw all the cards we need? Underground Sea Go. for vile bar special please <laughs> yeah underground sea go is uh i don't know whenever my opponent just like goes land go and it's like not just like a fetch land i don't know i feel i always get a little bit more nervous maybe they're not going to kill me on turn two you don't know We'll be fine. We'll be fine, chat. I'm just gonna like cast him to Tarok and take both of my relevant spells. Alright, I am to Tarok. Good start. Hex Drinker. Alright, good start. Just another fair bug deck. Deal. Just tap the other land, please. No. I want this mom in play. Is there a merit to just like not valuing in this mom? This other file is going to one next turn. At some point we might be able to convince him to like actually tap out.
feel like my mom is like 9,000% getting fatal pushed if we just put it in right now. I don't think there's a reason to put in the mom. I guess we could like potentially draw it too, like a Thalia. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna sit on this for a little bit here. Oh, that's a good draw against uh, fun stuff. Activate no bird. <laughs> Heard you talk about your Thanksgiving plans. <laughs> you said your mom was gonna die. <laughs> I felt really bad for a second. Uh, I didn't even think about that. That's really funny. That seems like an effective use of your brainstorm. Definitely, yeah. Under understandably confusing now that I now that I think about it. My real mom is doing just fine, in case anyone in chat is wondering. She's doing great. The smother of runes in my hand, of Magic the Gathering cards, less likely to be living. Wow, that's mean, opponent. Why you gotta be like that? You attack with a Hexdrinker, am I supposed to block? I guess we're supposed to try to block here and probably get fatal pushed since we're we gotta take this vial to two now. And we only have one vial. I'm glad they burned this decay. Kind of like slowed me down for a little bit though. Oh wow. I didn't think I would get this far. I think I'm supposed to block this. We have inevitability. We just don't want to die to a heck two a progenitus. Deal? What do I do with land? Cast sword. Uh, cast sword in a days. Port them. I don't really like porting them. They just didn't do anything with three mana. Didn't do anything relevant with three mana. Don't really want to cast sword in a days. They haven't done anything with this game. They have five cards in hand. This is probably port. The upside of getting sword in play when we have the prospect of getting mirror preserved down pretty high, but we could draw a fourth land and potentially get the sword around days anyway. They've also been like religiously holding up mana. They might just like randomly have a main deck like spell pierce that they don't have anything to do with. Are they gonna like draw their other brainstorm card here? Let them go to draw step before porting now. Yeah. Sure, I think they still have that brainstorm card left in there. Whatever. So you're just looking at the office and you finish. Uh, I don't know. Lily seemed pretty hyper earlier. I thought about letting them drive, but then they just like brainstormed and drew it anyway. So, whatever. I thought about letting them drive, but then the brainstorm that they would cast there just becomes a perfect brainstorm. So, I think the result, end result is like pretty eh. What is this, Oko? Yeah. I'm gonna elk my other vial? Seems like it could be going worse for me. 
Seems like a bunch of dazes it could certainly be problematic. Uh, I don't think we can cast this Crusader. I think we need to play this Wisp. Wisp of the Vile. I don't love Wisp of the Vile. I kind of like having a 3 3. I don't want to put my Vile back on 0. I don't think it's going to matter. I kind of want this 3 3 depression of the Oko now, right? I feel like put, putting a Vile back to 0 would just take way too long this game. So I think I'm just going to hit the Oko and Wisp my land to hold up a plow. Beware of this wasteland wrecking my mana base. Maybe the Wasteland prices me into casting Crusader this turn. There's no way we're not getting dazed, right? But if... We'd rather get the Wisp dazed than Wasteland dazed than find a way to cast the Crusader afterwards. So yeah, I think the Wisp is good enough here. I uh, resolved it. Honestly, didn't expect that. But we have a plow to clear a blocker and then hopefully clear the Oko here. Something like that. Oh no, the dog is coming. Can you bring her a rawhide or something at least? I'll bring her a toy. That's not really as helpful. Get it. She already had one rawhide today. Did she? Yeah. After she was done playing in the afternoon. See, she's settling on the pillow. Oh, two her. wastelands. Oh, this is very bad for me all of a sudden. Look at her. Okay, sure. She'll, she'll be Fatal push. Yike. This is going poorly. Really wish I had a uh, mirror crusader in play. Sorry. Yeah? Show people how good Lily is. Uh, okay, the problem is fine. Lily is now in the room. Headphone warning if she starts barking, but she's usually pretty good about barking. Look, she just settled down. This is bad, because now they can make their food a 3-3. Three, three. Land, please. Alright, good step in the right direction. Unfortunately, Oko is literally impossible to, to beat with in creature combat, so... I think this is my absolute least favorite. Like, there are a lot of things wrong with Oko. My least favorite, I think, is that on, like, a completely empty board where your opponent has one thing and you have zero, the play pattern of plus the Oko to five to elk your opponent's one thing, the elk can attack the Oko down to two, and then the Oko gets to plus to four, and they still don't need to protect it at all because it gets to survive for a whole another turn cycle, because it gets supposed to 4 and then make a 3-3 three, three blocker afterwards. Possibly my least favorite play pattern with Oko. Man, really wish I'd cast a... Uh... Mirror Crusader instead of that Flicker Wisp, huh? I think I'm supposed to just cast the Sword Say Go. If they elk it, at least we can, like, hopefully attack down the Oko. If they... Plus, again, we can at least equip the elk, the sword to the elk and attack. Alright, we got two elk. Hopefully they don't have anything else here. If they have, like anything in their hand or removal spell we just get absolutely fucked here can't not attack though please have nothing in your whole hand oh thank god all right oko off the battlefield one of the two cards left in their hand probably second oko we're just gonna fucking die Do 
a snap concede to second Oko? Maybe. Is this game one, right? Yeah, I think it was game one. Hey, all right. Not snap conceding. Mana elk, yeah, but if they elk it, then at least we get to take down the other Oko, too. We could draw the second Crusader, yeah, that's true. Um, they are elking their food token, so that's fine. We can at least attack into their food token profitably. Ooh, or we just draw Flicker Wisp. That's gas. Now we get to just flicker their food token and hope try to clear the Oko. I'm just going to hard cast force here. Not a lot we could really do about that. Still not an unreasonable position here. So they have to block. We get to pump. Eat their elk food. With our elk vial. Pressure's on the Oko. Uh, they are targeting the Jite, so we just gain life here. Is this what I was missing? For? Oh man, we could, can we Caracas our GTA backdoor hand if we find one? Hell yeah. I'm into that. That's just that's just a wombo combo. Please stop playing cards, opponent. I can't beat magic cards. Oh well, that's a pretty decent one, I would say. Definitely helps us. Oh go feet nope, not feet the trickster. Thief of crowns. Cannot attack into this Oko profitably. So we'll pass the turn. Man, if we draw Caracas, get our GTA online. Yeah. <laughs> Revoke her right on time. As always. Hey, a mother of runes. That's like actually right on time, right? Well, not necessarily, but. So we could potentially try to clear the Oko right now and just like toss our GT into the garbage can. Which might be the play. We could also we could also wait until next turn to uh, get the mother of runes down and then be able to clear the Oko scot free. But if they find removal spells, it could just get really ugly because then they get to like elk my mom. I guess then we have three elk to attack the Oko with. Not the worst thing in the world. If they had a removal spell, my attack goes really badly, though. But if they had a removal spell, they would kill the Revoker and then start taking up their Oko again. Draw Crocus, defends our GTA, and recast into a Quip to our Aether Mile. 2019. Accurate. But yeah, one of the cards in their hand, Oko number three, clearly. I think I want to play Mom Pass. I wouldn't say we're that far behind if we cleared the Oko, right? We're in like a pretty light resource fight here. Delver. It's like. Not that annoying, I don't think. 
It makes blocking a lot more annoying for me. They have over three, I just don't, don't throw away in this game. I think I've accepted that, because we're going to expend a bunch of resources here trying to clear two Okos. Because now if we send all of the Oko, they can block uh, Delvron or Voker. And then, I guess that's a fine trade, right? And then we pro-blue our Revoker, eat their Delver, and then put the Oko to two and trade. So we're trading our, like, our GT for their Delver. I think that's probably fine. Hits the Oko to two. And then we have Thalia, so we potentially have things to push through the Angler to kill the Oko afterwards. So I think I'll, like, send all at Oko right now. Send all besides Mama. Why are we clearing Oko or Grizzly when we have Mama Pick or Voker? I guess that's a good question. Now this Delver kind of puts a damper on things. I like the ability to try to trade with their Delver of Secrets as well. Or to kill their Delver. They're at 26 though. <sighs> Maybe I'm being too hasty here. We have one card in hand, though. Alright. Chat talking me out of my lines. I never like listening to the chat. But I can see that sometimes chat is right. Then I probably don't need to be so aggro. They have, like, main deck. Uh. Like a jar, we get fucked, but yeah. We do have a lot of good draws here. Brainstorm. They have an engineer, we get absolutely boned. Stone Forge for Batter Skull. That's pretty good. Certainly not bad. We could potentially just send everything at the Oko now and less aggressively clear it and just make sure that it's off the battlefield forever. Especially with this Batter Skull coming down the pipeline. Could potentially just send Vile GTA Thali at the Oko. I'm concerned that this Revoker is just going to beef it at some point. Maybe I'm overly concerned. Sophie got, yeah, Sophie died. Sophie got elfed and treated. We literally only have this Batter Skull. Well, let's don't afford to be vulnerable. I mean, we're not tapping the Mother Bruise. We would just let a creature die and deal the Oko 5. I don't like the Oko being in play. I think I'm burning too much time. This is game one. I'm not attacking the Rogue. I'm attacking with Thalia and two Elk. I'm going to make my play. I think this is an okay trade. We lose our Chite in likelihood. Kind of sucks if we find exactly like Caracas or Wisp. We're down to two Wisps and two Caracas though. And Caracas has other reasonable things to do. I think this is fine. Nice save, GTA. I'm not super inclined. They just brainstorm. I'm not inclined to tap this Mother of Ruins post brainstorm. I think I can let this GTA die and win this game. We have Batter Skull. Interesting. 
Fatal push the Thalia. So this puts shields down. But we need to clear the Oko, right? They only have one mana, so they can't cast anything else this turn. So this is probably a, a fair use of this mom. Just pro black. I'd say GTA now, really? Not clear the Oko and have the shields down this Revoker seems really dangerous. I think I'd rather save the Thalia here. We also have Wisps that make the uh, GTA a, a better thing to keep around, but I think I am going to pro black this fatal push. Yeah, Wisp probably will have other reasonable targets. Uh, poor Nancy, one F six. So now they're probably gonna uh, try to go after my Stoneforge Mystic, I imagine. Lock this power sculpt in my hand. Oh wow! All right, we did it. We did it, chat. Good thing I didn't snap concede to the second Oko, because sometimes you can just trudge through them. Yeah, for sure. Cannot leave shields down. Yeah, protecting the GJ there seems really bad. Because then the Oko's at 2 and the shields are down the Revoker and they could, like, potentially shoot the Revoker, get their Oko online, and try to, like, restabilize that way. What did we board in last time? It was, like, just these four. I ended up cutting Ballista, Prelate... I wonder if cutting Revoker is, like, wrong, because Oko is, like, so backbreaking. It's really hard to defend reliably, though, especially post board when they're going to have, like, Plague Engineers and shit. But maybe Plague Engineers is, like, also a reason to cut down, like, Thalia's or something instead. No one plays D&D, just not can see death. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think more than most will play games that are very low odds of winning, for sure. Specifically, Patrick sometimes gets mad because I complain about how dead we are, and then he's like, why haven't you conceded yet? Sometimes you win the games that you think you're super dead. Yeah, so this is what we did last time. It's possible that Yeah, but yeah, when it involves like creature combat like that, sometimes you can just get there with your dumb idiot creatures. Yeah, what is a bit. What's up, cure cure touch? Dainty just needs a good catch up card like Terminator. Oh, that was six. But it also is on six. So this hands a pretty good. Six. We ship the Caracas probably. We want the stable mana base. Caracas only protects like a Thalia's or our Elk GTs as we as I experienced for the first time that being a possibility. No Thalia's. Cool. 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 Just let my Aether Vow resolve, please. Don't be a jerk, opponent. Nice, alright. Oh, but also don't abrupt yeah, I'd be okay with them abrupt game any throughout if they won't like waste their turn one and two like that. Then they play turn three Oko and then then it's bad news. I guess we'd play turn three Thalia, so we could stop that potentially. <gasps> I don't know. Just don't just don't make take game actions upon it. Alright, that's fine. It's an acceptable. Cast my Thalia Guardian of the Raven here. Yeah, I don't not don't want to waste them quite yet. They haven't shown weakness in their mana. Plague Engineer would be real obnoxious. I also would not be shocked to see them cast it here. Barf. Oh, I 
wastelands. It's not nothing. Any cool twos? No. We go like a stone forge. They have three cards in hand. Getting a Stone Forge Mystic does not seem strong. <sighs> I don't like playing Naked Wisp though, but Recruiters, like Wisp isn't getting a lot of value. Recruiter's just gonna instantly die. We might just uh, cast Wisp and Wasteland. them a little bit. We got double wasteland here. They have hit three running land drops, but I think we want to go after underground seas. It's also could line us up with uh, preventing some attacks. If we can get this engineer off the board. We could potentially like recruit into some good stuff. There's no way they attack engineer into flip the wisp though. Decay my wisp and punch me for a bunch. Yeah. Now we can go get a Mirror Crusader. They missed a land drop. I smell weakness. We just draw a Crusader. Yeah, really wish I'd drawn that last turn, huh? We could just Stoneforge, Wasteland them here, and then Vile on the Recruiter. It dies, go get uh, Crusader, try to hold down this fort. Potentially, or go get, like, Jailer. Jailer seems kind of greedy, though. 1-1 one, one double strike that has a uh, protection from their board seems decent here, especially because we get to Stoneforge for something. Probably Jite? Judy helps clean up this board. Sort of Fire Nice, never super good against the card Tarmogoyf. Probably GJ. Could be Batter Skull, potentially. But I assume the Stoneforge is dying, so probably not. With the Crusader line. You like just playing Crusader this turn? I kind of just want to, like, wasteland them into Oblivion and take away all their blue sources. I can just Crusader next turn. We're at 13. I would take the blue because they can cast Cantrips. Yeah, GJ just goes Crusader. They didn't play land last turn. I sense weakness. Let's grab the GT. Of course, they'll just hit their next land drop and I'll be very sad, but. I will elect not to block. We will take five. Jailer plan out the window. Probably the Crusader hopefully hold down the fort plan. Ooh, a source splash shares. That's good. Do we actually plow the engineer and play the mom here? That's probably better than taking care of a goif. Right? Gets less power off the board, but lets us get mom on. It also gets GTA online slower, but I think we're probably gonna casting a plow here anyway. We also not play the mom and so, like try to surprise eat a goif, right? By blocking the three four goif with the Hey, can you be quiet for like two seconds, Lily? Huh? We could not play the mom, we'll leave up two mana to attend intend to put in GTA, then surprise eat a Tarma Goif with a suddenly two two mirror crusader. If they don't cast a sorcery. I'm burning way too much time. I forgot this is the game that we spent a bunch of time doing nothing. We have two guard in hand. I think I'm just going to pass the turn here. Oh, go ahead. Thought 
these. That's a sorcery. That puts some dampers on my plan. Maybe we need to plow a caramel book now. Um, because they're gonna take my Gite. They're not gonna be able to fight off stuff. We plow Goyf, so then we get to stonewall everything. Yeah, we need to plow Goyf now. Stuff all the engineer, can we? Put sorcery in the graveyard, which means the Goyf's gonna attack into my Crusader and I can't kill them. So we have to chum block or go to four here. Yeah, the GJ makes these Goyf swole as hell. I think I need to plow Goyf. Oh, we could put in GD and Crusader. I don't know. Maybe that was the play. I almost just clicked OK and not put, didn't put in my Crusader. Maybe the play was let them take the plow. Take a chunk of damage, but probably not lethal. But can we attack? Possibly. So we're facing down a lot of damage still. At least they can't attack here. This will hold down the fork for a little bit at least, but definitely worked out the worst with my plan of uh, Plow the Engineer and like sneak attack them is that they had a, a sorcery and it was exactly Thoughtseize to make my equipment bad. Uh, this is all suddenly going downhill. If we had a Gita here and we didn't plow, if they could attack me for five. I'd be at three right now. That's pretty dicey. We equip, then we couldn't attack, right? But then we have to attack, so otherwise we get bought by the Delver. No, then, yeah, we would be super dead, I think. Imagine if we had, I think we'd be dead if we had GTA, right? I mean, we wouldn't be, there's a chance that the Delver doesn't flip, but we wouldn't die, but I don't think a GTA would get us out of the spot. Oh yeah, we get four counts. There's a cat in here and a dog now. God. Stream's getting out of hand. Oh, whoops. Didn't realize it was our turn. Let's just draw batter's full. Yeah, that's a good one. I think I'm supposed to pass the turn. Well, we could flicker our Stoneforge Mystic now. Wisp can get in front of Delver. If they have like second engineer, I would be sad. Oh, if the Delver blocks, and we only get the one trigger off of the Crusader. So we get two counters, we can clear the engineer, play the mom or something. No, we can't even play the mom because we only have two mana and we spend it equipping. So we do like nothing. And then we just die to two gigantic karma waves. Because we're a three life. We're at five with a GTA counter. Oh no, so we had to kill the engineer. We don't have to kill the engineer, we could gain four instead. Alright, I guess I'll second main attempt to flicker my stone forge mystic. You can't do the activate flicker trick, because that only works when it immediately comes back. Restoration Angel that trick works with not Flicker Wisp effects. Eh, not the worst thing in the world here. We lose our Flicker Wisp, but we get a Banner Squall out of the deal. Oh, we could also get Sword of Fire Eyes. I, didn't, I forgot this was still in our deck. Sword is probably not the play though, right? We kind of need Batter Skull. We need to stabilize, I think. Batter Skull can't really attack though. We could suicide into the Goyf, but that's not great. It does let us like try to kill off this Lily this turn or something. I 
think I'm in for suiciding the Crusader in particular this Lily. Or not suiciding, it doesn't die, but we're gonna have to like chop off the batter skull. But that's fine. I think we just want to gain life anyway. And we can do some picking up and putting back into play shenanigans until we get to enough mana to to deal with what's going on. Yeah, I guess we only have to jump with Batter Skull if they flip to Stealthor. Oh yeah, we could just jump with the Stone Forge as well. Alright, they got nothing. They are firing on no cylinders. We're not firing on a lot of cylinders ourselves, though. We could draw Angel Tomb. That'd be gas. Instead of our Crusader beat face. We gotta play fast. We only have five minutes left, and we may need to go to a game three. So, if they attack with just Goyf, I think I'm just blocking with Batter Skull. They're at 19, so we're not going to be able to, like, kill them with the shitty Crusader anytime soon. So I think we just want to gain life and let us give us a little cushion against this Delver and untap our Crusader to hold down the Goyf again. Oh, that's not a good draw. I'm just picking this up. I guess picking up this stuff now is bad against him, which are whatever. I need to F6. We do the sorcery because I don't want to sit to waste time. We have like five minutes on the clock. They get to push my stone forge though, which sucks. But we have like four turns to handle this Delver. This deck doesn't do anything unless they also want to send the engineer, which is not. I guess maybe the engineer is good because then we go to three here. We can't afford to do anything. Yeah, we actually have to block this Goyf. I actually like, don't even want to play this Aether Vial, but I should. I don't think we have a lot of draws here, though. So they put, attack with me to two. We draw Flicker Wisp. Uh, goodbye, Caracas. Flicker Wisp Recruiter. Cloud does not do it, uh, right? Because we plow the Delver, we can't play the Mon, we plow the Engineer, we die to this Insect Elaboration. Yeah, we're dead. Plow the Goyf. Can't do anything. Yeah. Got four minutes to play game three here. Um, do we see anything that makes us want these other cards? Not really. Alright, just gotta play fast. Easy keep. Never. What, what's Plague Engineer? My opponent doesn't have it. We at least have Karakasa probably before my opponent Plague And we have like this Wasteland. Potentially prevent Plague Engineer. Mom Thali is just like a really good curve anyway. Lily's going ham on a Rawhide over there. into Thalia meant something. Yeah, good times. Fucking Plague Engineer. Uh, did not shuffle on the Ponder. Possible I want to play Wasteland instead of Karagas there. Yeah, 
Yeah, Jalen's a good one. Hopefully Jalen is a good enough one to win in four minutes. Uh, shuffled. I think I'm supposed to just wasteland this. It's Gets us further away from Jailer, but. They're also spinning their wheels pretty hard with like the double ponder draws. Probably a lot of scary stuff going on that hand. Probably supposed to just snap off plow, right? I don't know. I'm not, not gonna plow a ponder. Maybe I'm not supposed to snap off plow. Jailer their first threat and then plow the follow up instead. Because we might need to, we otherwise we might need to play Jailer into an empty board. Probably just have to fire off his Jailer into another daze. Please just cast a Charm away and then don't have daze after casting three ponders. Probably still have to cast this Jailer with this hand. Put a six. Foul the scary draw, what for my clock? Ooh, Crusader, all right. Maybe we aren't casting Jailer this turn. It's probably supposed to tap that differently, but whatever. Crusader has, uh, Liliana Protection. And if they play Engineer, we can try to Jailer it. Engineer. Yep. I don't think I'm supposed to plow this. I think I just want to try to untap and Jailer it. Engineer to be forced. They would have forced the Crusader. It has to be exactly days to punish me. I think I'm going to just try to Jailer it. Maybe this is greedy. We don't draw land. Nope. Deal. Draw like Stoneforge or Thalia. Oh, I'll take that. Who's got the better draw engine opponent? Sylvan Library versus the Monarchy. They need like push into Lily. Even then, we get to protect the Monarchy for a while because we have double plow in hand. And yeah, Tina would be kind of obnoxious for sure. They have a lot of cards in their deck, though. I'm not positive they have TNNs. Sure. God, these pets are making so much noise, and we have three minutes on this clock, and I'm very stressed. Thought sees me. Thought sees uh, Angler. Angler's totally fine. Please cast the the big the big Gurmog. Uh, well, probably gotta plow both of these. Oh, never mind. We're just gonna plow the uh, the angler. Oh no, we could flicker the jailer. Oh yeah, I'm gonna flicker the jailer. But this, I should have uh, done this the opposite way, not attacked with the Jailer and hate the Gurmog because they gain less life for their library, but whatever. We have three minutes on the clock, we're playing fast. Ooh, they have something here? Please Fatal Push. This is less damage, right? Because they, they gain five. Ah, oh, yes! <laughs> Delicious! Oh, yes. Amazing. <laughs> I'm not even playing the second vial. Yes, 
give me, <laughs> give me that Delver of Secrets. Oh yeah, that's that's a good one. That is a good one. Mm. What you got? <laughs> Certainly the last hope. Plows deal. Never losing the monarchy. Beat them death of the smear and crusader. Yeah, it's not that much of a risk, because there's, like, no way they can actually take the Crusader off the board without, like, a second Lily. Because we have so much removal that are never going to be able to block my Crusader anyway. There's also not that much upside in it, though. We're going to have to attack in the following turn regardless. But, like, if they want to plus it, they have to discard a card, so I, can, I think that's, like, the biggest cost for them. I think I just need to... White Sin of the Lily. Uh, I don't want to risk something horrible going wrong, but I don't have enough time to think about it except two minutes left on this clock. It's probably correct to attack their faith and attack the Lily the following turn, make them waste the card. I'll path that so they don't gain a bunch of life. I guess I give them the shuffle on their brainstorm. I think they fetch or something. I feel like just a sword or GTA or something, just kill them, please. Nope. Him to turn a pool of my plow, then play their their Delver of Secrets to block my Crusader, and then they get to edict it. Yeah. What is this? Plague Engineer. That lets you live, technically, because you go to six after I plow it. Technically, should untap first because if we draw Flicker West, we can just lethal them. We didn't. Alright, now Mom gets to block for us from another edict. Should be fine now. Don't think they have a lot left in their arsenal to uh, beat this board state. 
from two life. Double edict. Then we get to play the Thalia and they're hellbent. Bonus SGG. That was a tie one, for sure. Are you guys done being super loud, huh? I don't even know where the cat is. The cat was in here earlier. What did we lose to? We lost all hands. Pretty rough series of mulligans and kind of some non-games. Kept like a six that I wasn't happy with. I might have more aggressively gone to five. That was a quick cue in here. All right, this is a good hand. It's a solid hand of magic cards. Hopefully Wasteland is good against my opponent. Game plan. Uh, this doesn't look very good for this hand. Well, we have a progress if it's reanimator. Shadow? Oh, uh, I see. Okay. Well, this hand sucks, but a lot of our hands suck. Game one against Hogak. That was a great mill for us, at least. I wonder if I just I'm supposed to snap off uh, Wastelanding uh, Hogak's mana. Instead of trying to develop my own. I kind of want to. Game one, you have to get pretty lucky to beat Hogek. So I think trying to aggressively attack Mana Light Hands is definitely a way to go. I mean, the Krogs isn't going to beat Hogak. Oh, wow. Basic Swamp. Never lucky. Can't wasteland basic swamp. Now we play the vial. Alright, I think I'm just gonna snap off another wasteland on this, depending on how this turn goes. To draw more cards though, so it's probably not gonna go super well for us. Scary cards. Two Venge Vines in the yard. Yeah, I think I want to Wasteland to try to prevent double spell at least. We can try to like strand them on this swamp. We might be able to prevent, like, bonkers turns. Stop hitting land drops. Goes distinctly against what I'm trying to do to you, opponent. We're getting gacked from the hand. That's fine, so we can Karakas it. Hopefully they don't have a follow-up card to trigger these Avenge Vines. If they do, we're fucked. But if all they have is this gack. Problem is that we can keep they can keep like cast using the skag to trigger vines. I don't love our chances still because they can use this gag to to uh, get some venge vines going, but I definitely like our chances a lot more than if they had gotten two four threes with haste back this turn. Certainly, don't think I like Thali. I think I want to get, like, Stoneforge for Batter's Bolt to be able to try to beat these Venge Vines as fast as possible, and, like, follow you next turn. Like, if they cast a two-minute spell, the only scary two-minute spell would be Alter, and then we can response for Poker that. I don't think Thalia does a huge amount for us here. It stops, like, a second careful study into, like, another thing to cast. Yeah. Revoke Alter. I'll... I mean, we only revoke Alter if they pl put an Alter on the stack. Oh, unless we cast spells and let the Hogak stay in play for a turn. I'd much rather cast a Thali in that case, right? Because that just stops the altar from hitting play. 
where you could play Thalia of Violence and Force take the hit from the Gak for a turn. I don't like taking a hit from a Gak with two Venge Vines in the yard, though. The, the one thing I do like about bouncing the Gak is that we can bounce it in combat, which means they can't get the Venge Vines back until the following turn. And that means that we'll have, we'll have Stoneforge online by then at least. So I think we're just going to pass here and then have Stoneforge and Caracas ready to go. It's a bad draw for me. We need to Phyrex and revoke that for sure. Otherwise, they get to get their Venge Vines back because they sacked their Gravecrawler. We gonna revoke that Carrion Feeder. Faux show. Uh, yes, use it for Mal's ability. Definitely leaving this vial on two, I believe. So I think we want to do Thalia, Thalia Caracas, Stoneforge, rather than Stoneforge Wisp. Maybe that's incorrect. Not sure. What is this? Okay. So if we, yeah. So this attack means that they can't get the bench mines back this turn post combat if they want to. As much as I really don't want to block Stitcher suppliers, we might have to. Just feed their graveyard, get dumped on. Might have to be block Stitcher supplier. You can take five, go to nine. We're going to have to block them eventually, just a matter of when. What's our, what's, what does our next turn look like? Probably Thalia Stoneforge hold up Caracas. Thalia blocks reasonably well, too, which is not bad. And then the following turn, we can take the Vile up to three at least and have uh, access to Stoneforge mana plus Wisp on three. Um, blocking Supplier makes them casting Hogak a little bit harder. We get punished by blocking if they like if we hit another grave crawler. Maybe we take four here, go to go to ten. Oh yeah, ther that's true. Therapy's real bad for us, yeah. Oh, I'd buy that. We can have this back back though. We definitely want to fade therapy for like one more turn. These Venge Vines are probably coming back, though, and it's very bad for me, because I think we might be at, like, too low of a life total to adequately deal with them. If that's the case, maybe we need Stoneforge Mystic plus Flicker Wisp. Wisp holds off Venge Vines for longer, because if they draw anything to cast, they have Gak into, like, Creature into two Venge Vines coming at me, and we're at ten. And we would have one reasonable blocker. They have to tap two things, though, and they can attack with Carrion Feeder, Gravecrawler, Venge Vine, Venge Vine. We could block one Venge Vine with Protection. We'd have to chump block another Venge Vine. Activate Vile now, then take... That doesn't matter. I don't care about that. It's just a matter of, do I want access to my Thalia or my Flicker Wisp this turn? In addition to the Stoneforge Mystic. I don't care about the Vile being on three. You know, we just take it up to three next turn. I'm not trying to like bridge the gap to four. Uh, two Venge Vines is so bad. Yeah, we might just need to get lucky and fade for one more turn. I'll leave it on two. Cast the Thalia, Violet, and the Stone Forge. That's another option. Yeah, 
think Valley of Fire. There's a non. There's like a non-zero chance we can fade for like one more draw step here. Nope, did not fade for one more draw step. Carrion feeder, tap both feeders, gack me. Yeah, this this is certainly bad. I need a chum block with this Thalia, which really sucks. We obviously need to keep this Revoker alive. There's two carrier feeders with this Gravecrawler in play. Also, just all this shit with two with with carrier feeders is just all bad for me. Thalia block crawler takes six. That other works. Block uh, protection. Take six, yeah, that seems probably like the best line. Don't want to eat a citrus supplier because we're afraid of uh, Cabal Therapy. We can start eating them the following turn when we don't have things in hand. Yeah, we bounce out guy can get better as well. Yeah, I like that. Block. I guess it doesn't really matter how I block, right? This is six. Green. We're at four, which is a very small life total. They're gonna recast the grave crawler, I imagine. I don't know if this is good. This is certainly not horrible. Ding. Ding. Batter skull. Untap. Take file to three. Recruiter of the Guard, duh, Recruiter goes and finds Crusader. Doesn't really find a lot else that's relevant. Walking Ballista might be relevant at some point if we see Bruges in the yard. The play is probably just past the turn, though. I have the ability to put in Batter Skull and have the ability to Violent Wisp. I don't think we want a Recruiter for anything here. I mean, we can't really recruit for anything here. So we just get mom. No, then we can't put in the batter skull if we just get mom. We need to put in this batter skull to live. To continue to live this turn. I, well, I guess we don't need to. There's a chance we can block out of it, but we're at four life. Four is a very low life total. Oh, yeah, that math does work out, doesn't it? Uh, we'll see you for that now, and I don't know if I would do that. Yeah, we're certainly passing here. I wonder how we're blocking. Blocks just look so weird here. Like, we might want to block with the Batter Skull and then Wisp the Bat... Like, block a Vengeman with the Batter Skull and then Wisp the Batter Skull to reset it. Uh, and then we pro color block the other vengevine block a grave crawler with thalia and then we can like just take four or something oh dear well now they have to blind name so step one definitely put in the batter skull step two is has we have to put in this flicker because they don't necessarily 
snap off naming a recruiter here. So we flicker wisp our stone forge, I think, or flicker wisp of venge vine. Flicker wisp stone, yeah, I think flicker wisp stone forge. Go get gta. We could potentially play equip the gta to something next turn too. GTA seems like it's a, poss a distinct possibility of being strong here. They can't flashback this turn. We have a Thalia, unless they have a land in hand. Unless their last card in hand is a land. They have Hogak something. What do you name here in this world? It'd have to be like a three drop, right? And Mirroring Crusader, maybe? Maybe they do name Recruiter. I wouldn't be like super surprised. Yeah, they named Recruiter the Guard. They nailed it. Definitely not an unreasonable name. I definitely, I, I have two mana, I 100% would, would have cast a plow by then. Yeah. Now it's their job to figure out what to do from here. <laughs> Blessed Alliance. Yeah, 100% want to plow by friends. specifically mill for their stitch, mill stitch with citrus supplier which it looks like I guess they do want to do target themselves sure they mill the blood gas and a grave crawler nothing too threatening fifth land for us would still be pretty good because we could suit up our wisp seven five Life Linking Wisp is pretty strong. Okay. You have a Hogak in the yard. I don't know if that's, like, better than having it in your hand. I guess it's the same, right? No, it's worse, right? It, uh, it's worse. I mean, it's got, I'm just going to Krogan, so it's not going to matter. But there's no reason to discard it, right? If you draw, like, a careful study later. Hey, hey, psst. Cat, stop doing that, please. Stop that, you stupid pug. <laughs> Casting this Hogak seems unnecessary and not use. Like, it just doesn't do anything, right? Unless. There's no reason to cast this Hogak, I don't think. They're just, like, actually draining their own graveyards at this rate. They can't profitably attack here, right? We can just eat a Vengevine with uh, Mother Runes. We don't even have to block anything, right? We can just eat a Vengevine take one if we want. We can also eat the other Stitcher Supplier and take zero. We may need to just kill this other Stitcher Supplier to, stop to prevent bleeding. We can gain life. Their carrion feeders are turned off. Any provoker on carrion feeder. As much as I don't want them to mill more. Yeah, I think we need to prevent this bleeding, right? We think we need to just bite the bullet and kill the stitcher supplier. Yeah, we, we kind of care about milling because, like, bridge from blows could be concerning, but, yeah. 
Let's go to blocks. Yeah, altar is definitely obviously priority number one. Let's blocks like that, and then just program my germ. Oh yeah, we're getting GTA. I forgot about that. I kind of forgot we had a stone forge coming down. did get a bridge. Oh, I guess first strike kind of sucks because I get a zombie here, but whatever. Yeah, one zombie's fine. Hey, can you guys stop? What are you, what are you guys doing? <laughs> uh, so we can just play equip batter skull, play equip GD to batter skull, uh, attack for four. Can we attack with anything else? Do we need to attack with anything else? I don't think so. And I think we can just pass the turn. Can you stop? I don't have enough time to deal with these cats. Dumbass motherfuckers. Oh, wait, hang on. No, yeah, we need to activate the Stoneforge. Or we need to follow the employee. Yeah, Wisp could send, I think, pretty safely. I'm not positive. Yeah, I'm pretty positive Wisp could send pretty safely. We're going to gain four here. I don't think we're just like eating their board down, mowing the board down with their with this GT, right? So we'd have to ping off one of our own things first to, to break bridges. Hey, psst, eat it. Okay, supposed to it. Gets rid of the, the one bridge. We could toss the ballista, and then just ping off what two carrion feeders? Carrion feeders like barely doing anything. It just like cast their Hogak and their Hogak doesn't do anything. I think we can just pass the turn. Save this ballista. Ping the feeders first and toss the lily. That doesn't make any sense. Wouldn't we want to toss the ballista to break the bridges, then ping the feeders so they don't get a bunch of zombies? Yeah, I think we just need a fade altar. I think that's basically our only real thing. I think I'm just passing. I'm just gonna pass. I think we're fine. It's anything besides like altar of dementia. Hey, Lily, stop that. When I go to sideboard, I'm gonna try to get rid of these animals. They are getting too out of hand. Yeah, we can pick up one of our own X ones if they find altar to potentially try to break bridges. Crawler, sure. Into Hogak, get back the Vengevine. None of this stuff matters because they can't attack Vengevines into the germ. Cast Blood Gas, sure. So we don't have enough mana to move over. Don't think this is lethal. Lily, calm down. GJ kills blocker. They have a bunch of gigantic blockers, right? 
Pro Green the Germ. Doesn't have Trample. GJ can like clear two of the massive amount of X ones they have in play. They're at ten. Um, we could play the Ballista for two now. Also, oh yeah, their X ones can't block, can they? Can't block, can't block, can't block, can't block, can't block. Clear the zombie with uh, the walking ballista. Attack them for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah. Or we yeah we can ballista for two the zombie. Uh, program the germ. I always forget that like nothing they have can block. I really need to get rid of these animals. All right. Handled the animals, thank god. Now we can sideboard for the matchup. Tamer Priest, rest in peace. Potentially this, probably not this. Probably not Chalice's either. All right, how are we sideboarding? Jailer sucks. Um, Sword sucks. Ch yeah, Chalice won. <coughs> Surprisingly okay against them. Certainly not unreasonable to as a, as a possibility. We'll put it in the maybe pile. These are the definitelys. Let's figure those out first. I think Prelate sucks a lot in this matchup. It's just way too slow to disrupt the early game. The only real thing you can do with it is protect your recipes by putting on like two or four, but Prelate is incredibly slow oftentimes in this matchup. Um, I don't think I like Deafening Silence. They don't cast a ton of non-creature spells in the same turn. It prevents like the double therapy turns, but like a lot of their stuff is just creatures. Um, there's a possibility that... Dahlia? Yeah, if it was like Ethersworn Canis, it's like a different to topic, right? Because Ethersworn could potentially stop uh, Venge Mines and stuff. Thalia's could probably, some number of them could probably go. Um, what else would we cut here? I need to like shave some wisps. I don't really wish that we had needles that much in this matchup. It's like not a huge upgrade from Friction Evoker, right? I mean, it costs one less, obviously, but like hits the same things. There aren't like specific targets. It's not that much easier for them to take off the board since most of their stuff hits not just creatures. Let's go with that. Who is Mom here? Mom is pretty decent at like handling those like really messy boards like we saw in game one, I think. I think this hand is a absolute trap. You're not going to beat Hogak in a reasonable game of magic by keeping this hand. I think I will very happily mulligan to hands that uh, actually have graveyard hate. That's turn one file sneep. 
file into Thalia, and we have the Stoneforge Mystic? How could this hand possibly go wrong? I should probably stop fucking around, because I have, like, ten minutes in this game, too. Uh, well, this hand sucks, too. It's got a Karagas in it, which doesn't, which makes it not worse. Did you win the last game in the hand? It, that was a very tight game we won, and my opponent has sideboarded since then. <laughs> this hand is... I think... Did our last hand have a Caracas? I think it did. I'm still not happy about this, but I also really don't want to go to five. Go to five sucks. Especially because the, they, they also mold a six, though. Ugh. Yeah. Definitely not happy about this hand, either. But I kind of dislike going to five. Especially when they have pretty easy options to answer my threats, and they have threats like or uh, threatening cards like Cabal Therapy. Not actual threats, but yeah, they only mold to six. So like Port's not a super great plan. This deck's pretty good at hitting its first couple of land drops. Yeah, I'm not excited about this hand, but we're on the draw. Can't ask for like a, a whole lot. has the potential to, to find. We have like five pieces of graveyard hate. And we have two recruiters to potentially find uh well, that's scary. Okay, bench vine, huh? Ding. <laughs> like the chat chat sensed my brief moment of hesitation. wonder if I'm actually supposed to play out this Caracas at some point. Like, ahead of time. Obviously, we like holding Caracas because it incentivizes them to play Hogak into it, and then they don't know about it. Especially with this carrying feature, though, I don't know if that play matters a lot. And we might need to, like, set up our next land drops with, like, ports and stuff anyway, so it might be better to get the Caracas out now. We could just get the port out right now. Like, if we draw Wasteland, we're probably going to have to deal with a Hogak next turn, so we want to be able to progress the Hogak and then, like, waste... Although, we can't Wasteland them, so... Uh, again, I'm probably wasting too much time. I spend a lot of time thinking about, like, land drops. I spend definitely way too much time thinking about them. Especially in games where I just don't have that luxury, like this one. Because we had a very long and intense game one against Hogak. Quite the stressful game one, certainly. <clears throat> oh, well, that's horrible for me. Top deck for Exner Broker, please. Clenched, indeed. We draw a removal spell for this carrion feeder. Oh, I'm blocking this carrion feeder for sure, right? I need to stop them from getting two creatures online to get this hogak going. We are snap blocking this carrion feeder. I wonder if they're supposed to sack it in mill one. Probably not. Well, that went well. Uh, this, so the second Stone Forge doesn't do anything. The GTA we can't 
get online regardless. So we could just, we can probably just spend this turn porting them off of like blue potentially. Alternatively, we could just develop two Stoneforge Mystics or develop G Table Stoneforge. They have two cards in hand, which makes me kind of nervous. They didn't play either of them. There could be more lands, and my ports are in vain. I think I'm, I'm definitely cutting up the blue, if anything. The green doesn't do a lot for them, but I think porting them is probably correct here, given that my second Stoneforge doesn't do a lot. And if we want to, we can play it with the GTA next turn anyway. Cutting the blue shuts off the scary cards. Yeah, careful study, crabs. And the green doesn't really turn off a lot. This deck mostly plays green for sideboard cards and the occasional hard cast of Vengevine. The real question is, do we just get our GTA online now? I'm going to leave this vial on two. Squire is better than nothing. We could draw it. That can get punished. We leave up our Krakus if we do this Ancient Tomb now, but I don't think we leave up Krakus relevant against this altar. Getting this GJ down seems good because it's bad against uh, Force, but if they have Force, they're down to one card in hand, so they're pretty far away from doing stuff. And if it, they don't have Force of Vigor, then we can uh, control their creatures and play with the GTA pretty well. I don't think I want to put both on the table. Like, both equipment. Like, we cast the GTA, put the Batter Skull, but that's, like, really bad into the face of Force of Vigor, right? I guess discard is a concern, certainly. Oh, Jesus. Cat almost knocked over the chair. Christ. Yep, a little bit of punish, but I think it's mostly fine. Yeah, we control the bridges and we control them and their ability to have two creatures in play. Discard a bridge, and yeah, now they have therapy. Uh, they know about this batter skull, so I can just let this resolve. I guess I can just put in this mystic and fail to find, because we don't have another equipment anyway. Just in case. They just like name Stone Forge and have a second therapy or some shit. There's no reason to not put this in. I guess I wasn't supposed to actually shuffle. No, we already shuffled. Doesn't matter. But yeah, they can take the skull. Yep. Batter Skull down, which sucks, certainly. Now I'll take this off to three. And let it resolve up on the option to see a second therapy. I mean, then you just, what happens then? They just don't cast the second therapy anyway, right? We're just gonna have to put in the Stone Forge. If they have second therapy and the first one, like, blind names of Stoneforge for some ungodly reason, then, like, don't it randomly be caught without our, uh, our trusty squire, right? That's not a good draw. We can try to choke the blue mana again. Am I supposed to be aggressively pumping here? How aggressively? How many counters do I want in reserve? They have a bridge in the graveyard, so at least two counters to kill my own Stoneforge Mystic. And I think I want, like, one other to ping off an X1, so I think I want to pump, like, once. Let me stop wasting my time. Tomb is a show of strength. Uh, Stitcher Supply is bad for me. So it resolves. If they want to, like, sack it to the 
therapy. We can kill our own stone forge in response. Prevent the zombie. For like a second at the altar. They have a second thing that's bad for me because they give it to Venge Vines, which is horrendous. Is Jailer in now? Jailer's in our sideboard right now. This is looking not good. Really need to draw. Nothing, really. I guess this kind of prevents us from it. Time. Yeah, the critter would be a very good draw here. Look at Wisp. That's not horrendous. It's not good. Uh, am I supposed to let them have a zombie and just ping off the Scissor Slayer and attack into it? I could also just attack into it, I guess. I don't need to ping it if I'm just attacking into it anyway. I don't have time to think about this. I'm just attacking with both. Yeah, we have the ability to kill the zombie, so. We can now ping our own Stoneforge and only use one counter here. I don't know, they're just gonna sack down. Oh, yeah, that's why we they were supposed to actually ping. Because they prevent us from getting GTA counters. I think we're fine with them getting the zombie. We can flicker it. But yeah, I was definitely supposed to not let them just stonewall from me for no reason. Now that they have a grave color, so now we need to definitely clear this zombie. So I guess we'll flicker wisp it. So they can't cast grave crawler. I could double ping it and like potentially flicker the altar or something, but we only have three minutes. So I gotta hustle. He, yeah, he did sack the altar. Yeah, so we're probably supposed to also move the thing over to the wisp. The, that attack was bad. Everything bad. Lethal or one off lethal, assuming there's nothing in play. Well, now we have lethal, assuming there's nothing in play. Oh, he's, oh yeah, they didn't sack the zombie to the altar. Yeah, that's true. Three, two cards not milled. Uh, crap. It's not a zombie. Crab is only relevant if they have another creature to cast afterwards. Because they have two Venge Vines in the yard. Next turn looking like a equip. Hey, Lily, quiet. I don't know when Lily got back in here. Therapy themselves to get a zombie and then cast Grave Crawler. So we have to ping off the zombie in response here so they can't cast the Grave Crawler to get Hoax and stuff. Or we could kill our own thing to prevent the Wisp trigger. Um, kill our Mystic. Is killing our Mystic better than killing their zombie though? Both use two counters. One of them gets rid of the bridge forever. I think it is. Because it gets rid of the. We need to get rid of this bridge. only one less damage that we're missing, so. Yes, I know I'm killing the mystic or the zombie or something. We get rid of the bridge forever and we miss one less damage, but the one less damage probably doesn't matter. Ooh, 
Ooh, that's a very good draw. Guess it actually doesn't matter to move. Am I actually supposed to pump there? Not sure. have plenty of mana, that is for sure. Opponent does not have a lot to beat me with, though. Yep. That's the game. Should have revoked Rest of Peace. I think there's a chance we lose if we don't revoke the altar. Club had crab for BM. Nah. We had some sweet games on a BM. Says that that's seven damage. Source of pleasure is the revoker. God, you guys are you guys are so mean. Hang on, I need to deal with this dog one more time before our last match here. All right. One more round. Rain six, one of honor. Yeah, sell your rain six. This is cards trash. That was quite the game. Quite the match. We won two games against Tohogak without playing a single graveyard eight card. League been pretty good. Played against Bug Delver, who lands Bug Delver, Hogak. A lot of uh, bug decks today. Three for four. Right. It's a hand. Certainly a hand of magic cards. Yeah, I'll be one Bug Delver. I think uh, D&D is pretty good against Bug decks. Especially if you uh, just want to go up a little bit on Crusaders. All right, our opponent is on Shadow. Our opponent is named Night Shadow J. opponent is also on a Mulligan 2-5, so... Either we are super dead, or... We get to stomp our opponent's face on. Although, I guess if our opponent's just like on a Mulligan 5 with a deck that Plow's bad against, then like... On a multi five two. What does Flicker West do in this deck? Uh, with Aether Vial, you have a lot of ability to flicker your own creatures or your opponent's creatures. It's also just an evasive threat to put equipment on. Very secretly, or sometimes not so secretly, like an extreme, like one of the best cards in the deck. Uh, all right, well, I feel like Depths Mulling to Five is not going to be happy to see it. Caracas, and two Source of Plowshares, and a Flicker Wisp. You put in a Flicker Wisp. 
<laughs> After Chaos like dubious gel, yeah, that's what this deck's all about. If my opponent is in fact depths, I imagine this hand makes them very upset. <laughs> Ooh, is it like turbo depths? Or maybe it's not depths at all. Alright, well I hope it's depths. I'm supposed to hit them with this mom, probably not. Hopefully they don't Cabal Therapy me. That would suck. Yeah, it feels a lot like a, a Depth deck. Yeah, well, I'll take that at least. God. Ban Urborg, stop making me click my lands twice. I would say this is a pretty decent hand against Dark Depths, especially if they're on like the Lotus Petal versions. Sorry, we do have to be careful about dying at any moment here, but we're probably not gonna be able to cast any spells anyway. Oh, well, he has his port, so that's pretty good. Definitely not casting a Wisp though. <laughs> Ban every card with Urborg in the name. And Gio needs a setting to ignore Urborg from mana producing lands, please. Needs a I never care about producing black mana with my cards. Setting. Port, sure, I guess. I'm gonna port your port. Damn it. I think there is still a uh, a default. Can port my Caracas, sure. Please make it twenty twenty. Go for it, opponent. What if we go wrong? I mean, I only have two ways to kill it. Their hand is not of this world, not of this world. We could also just draw a white source, and that doesn't matter. Oh, well. I think I want to leave up my handful of magic cards rather than cast a mother of runes. Activate the bell on two. That's true. Oh, plow. Plow the hex mage? Feels like that runs into a knot of this world pretty badly, right? I'd plow an upkeep, if anything. Also runs into like a crop rotation potentially. Don't find his passing. Might have been right to activate the vial to see what they would do. Alright, so this resolves. They have to they know I have two plows in hand, so they have to think that this kills me. I guess I just Caracas this Merit Lage and then have to plow it after they not not of this world me, I imagine. They could have not of this world plus good crop rot too. We could also plow our own mother of runes to beat the not of like those lines. Well, let's attempt to Caracas it first. Yeah, I think I am going to plow mom here. They have one card in hand. I don't know. I don't think we can really die from one life here. I might honestly just cast the wisp. I don't want to cast the wisp there. That dies to a crop rotation. P 
Plow loses to sec Plow the Marilise loses the second down of this world or crop rotation. Um Plowing our mom just keeps us at twenty one. We take twenty and then we untap and we should be able to lock up the game after that with our hand of a bunch of magic cards that yeah, just respect it because we can't really We have to plow an upkeep, right? They, they don't, well, you know, this deck doesn't like with Dragon Arbor, right? They could like property into Dragon Arbor and kill me from 21 anyway. Plow follows this to rotation for Teetering Peaks. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, definitely, I'm pretty sure I'm killing mom here. It's just a matter of, do I, is there a world where I want to kill it, kill my mom in my upkeep? Instead of end step? I don't think it really matters, especially because the mom can pro itself. I wouldn't tap first. Even before they like make white mana. Because if I tap her black first, they can I guess they could just respond. It doesn't it doesn't matter, because if they try to kill it with a black spell, we can tap it after that. But with our hand of, like, two plows and a flicker wisp, I think we should be able to stay afloat at one life for the rest of this game. Pretty reasonably. We had to untap and, like, have Crocus Wisp and plow for this Merry Lage. Consider you stuff to target our creatures? I'm pretty sure no. Otherwise, none of our... Otherwise, we just plowed the Lage, I think. Because then... None of our lines beat Crap Rot. I guess Plowing Blade would have run into second out of this world, though. Alright, what you got, opponent? Can you give your Merit Lage an extra power deal? Second Hex Mage? Yay, we did it! Because <laughs> now we just get to Crocus this Merit Lage. If they have, if the last card is a second knot of this world, um, then we just get to like Flicker Wisp it, and if they make another Merit Lage here, we can plow that one too. Really wish I knew what the, my opponent's last card in hand was. It's always gratifying when you like actually played around their thing super well. Surgical more against the all in depth specs than some of the others, but still, like, not great. some accolades in the chat.
Crawl on seven. <laughs> Sword is my hands, probably fine too. Yeah, sword's pretty weak in this matchup too. Are we just like keeping my triple plow hand? It's like this hand's like pretty strongly medium. We're on the draw, we have a flicker whiz. It's like it doesn't suck. Especially against like the super all in like the turbo turbo depths. Uh, plows don't always save you, especially because we're like kind of choked on white mana here. I think this is definitely gonna keep on the draw though. Oh geez, bottom mulligan to five, rough. Didn't it, this is my bottom mulligan to five last game too, right? And we almost fucking died if we had like cast that plow in correctly. Source of shares, I suppose. <laughs> My opponent just says, bruh. <laughs> I'm sorry, opponent. Hey, mom. That's a pretty good draw. I, mean, I think I would have preferred white mana, but I'll take it. So they found a Dark Depths. They have three cards in hand. We apologize to people trying to free Elder Shorters out. My opponent's a very nice person. My opponent and I are having nice words in chat that none of you can see. Because they're all off to the side. My opponent's, my opponent's nice. Uh, yeah, I'm casting Stone Forge Mystic. I'm just sitting here trying to think about like what's going on these next couple of turns. Probably just find batters will say go, but opponent did force me to plow my own mom. When you put it that way, it does sound a lot less good. My opponent sounds like a lot less of a good person. So they have Dark Depths here. We're not just like dead to something, right? They can't crop rotation. They need like rotation spirit guide, which is not unheard of, certainly. Oh, well, all right. White source off the top, one time dealer. We can no longer die here, now that they play the Reclaimer. White source off the top, one time dealer. really want to let them have this Elvish Reclaimer, but I really shouldn't let them have this Elvish Reclaimer. I really should cast Swords of Plowshares. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm gonna plow it. I'm just sad because I don't want to. Plow it and tag him for one. Me, me, me. Complain about me being in a good matchup and having an opening hand with resource clashers. 
Woe is me, my life is so hard. You hate to see it. Oh, well maybe you don't hate to see it. Maybe my opponent's just gonna fucking murder me. We were previously dead to an out of this world here, but now we just get to cast Council's Judgment. So if we cast Council's Judgment here, for those of people that are not in the know, Council's Judgment is not target. So my opponent has two options. Let the spell resolve, then we will Hex Mage and immediately dies. Or they try to make the Merit Lage, and then the Merit Lage is in play. When this resolves, we vote the Merit Lage off the island. We're still dead to not know. We're just going to cast this Council's Judgment and fuck them up. We could also cast Flicker Wisp to not die to not of this world, but then we would die to like Green Source Croc or Green Source Crop Rot, I believe. Or just natural Sejiri Step. I think she used my opponent real quick before we get out of here. Why didn't wouldn't your dad with mom there? I don't know. If they like have green source and abrupt decay my stone forge mystic and we really wanted to put in that batter skull but at that point i don't think that one damage was uh, really being meaningful right green source decay my stone forge prevent it from my batter skull but we have a wisp and a mirror stator i'll probably punch in their face and pretty bad but gg's opponent opponent was a nice fellow yeah you link to your deck list. Well, we have a deck list right here, and there should be a deck list icon somewhere on the screen for you. If you're on mobile, there should be a little like symbol below the stream. If you're on desktop, there should be an icon somewhere. Yeah, GG's. Sorry about the rough matchup, certainly, but fun games. Yeah, no problem. I always just try to explain it because not everyone knows how they work in mobile. The, the deck list works. There should be a little button somewhere. Oh yeah, for sure. Everyone has the Nightmare matchup, right? Are you talking about the plow on the on the Reclaimer, Luna? Like, putting the Battlefield might have actually been better, but I don't know. Reclaimer is a scary card to let people on tap with. But yeah, that's going to be our stream today. Quite a while. Trophy that would mess you up a little. Go low 20. Yeah, I don't think there's a lot of punishment for just getting the battle scum to play that turn, but I don't know. Go eat a turkey, you heathen. It's not even happening until Thursday. I got like three days before that, but let's, let's find someone to host. Who's doing a stream? I'm the only one streaming Legacy? Come on! Yeah, discard punishment, but... Alright, who's streaming, like, anything? Alright, let's go dump you off with uh, Fluffy Wolf 2. Fluffy Wolf hosts me a reasonable amount. Cool guy. He's People that are always on after me are people that I never get to watch, though, because I always stream and then immediately go to sleep, so I feel bad that I never get to watch these people, but let's go host. Uh... But at least I can drop all of you off. Spread some love. Oh, whoops, I just typed slash fluffy wolf to slash host. Oh, yeah, Card Kingdom does stream on Mondays. I'm already committed. It's too late. I usually host Card Kingdom, though. But they didn't show up in my uh, MTG streams for some reason. They usually do. Because their title doesn't say legacy explicitly in it or something. But anyway, thanks everybody for watching today. Thanks. Uh, hope everybody had a good time. Had some sweet games today. A lot of thought-provoking games. I guess that's why it took so long. This league took a long time, but definitely had some very complex lines. Hope uh, everyone learned a little something. But anyway, 
this is probably my last stream for the week because of Thanksgiving, so happy holidays if you are in America, and if you're not, have a good week, because we will probably see you again next Monday. Uh, that's all I got. That's all I got. See you all later.